I just need to know where this is going. Hey, I like you. Alright, it's not to lie. But you need to access your uncrazy side. Otherwise, maybe this thing has run its course. Don't you dare walk away from me, Daryl Philbin. You are the most selfish person I've ever met in my Slow entire... Down. Think it over. Daryl Philbin is the most complicated man that I have ever met. I mean, who says exactly what they're thinking? What kind of game is that? I'm Rose Skeeters, host of From Borderline to Beautiful, a show about hope and recovery for BPD. Are you wondering how I recorded this podcast? Well, if you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. First of all, it's free. Second, there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and anywhere you can hear a podcast. You can make money from your podcast, too, with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place, so if you have something to say... I encourage you, be bold, own your story, download the free Anchor app, or go to anchor.fm to get started. So that was a clip from Kelly Kapoor from our favorite show, The Office, one of our favorite shows. And she is talking to Daryl, who works in the warehouse, and he's telling her, straightforward no bs access your own crazy side and i'd love to be with you and this is confusing to her so if you've never seen the office and you're not familiar with this clip please google best of kelly kapoor the office even watch that episode or any of the episodes where you know that you see when you're looking at the clip it is hilarious um yeah, so definitely check it out. I thought it was a great start to an episode following last week's talk about relationships where we're going to talk about communication. So relationships with BPD, as we've been saying, they're really tough. And there are just so many things that I can focus on when I'm talking about relationships. So today I want to talk about relationships and communication. A relationship will fail if it doesn't mimic a partnership. So communication is really at the core of that appropriate direct communication. So today let's talk about how we can communicate better with our partners, where things go wrong and what we can do about it. So I'll ask you a few questions and just think about it. You know, number one, do you talk at your partner or do you talk to your partner? Do you listen to your partner or do you wait to respond? Do you expect the person you're in relationship with to read your mind? For whatever reason, direct communication seems to be really difficult for folks with BPD. It's as if we will do anything else, even be passive aggressive or have big shows and displays of emotional intensity just to avoid saying what's on our mind in a vulnerable way. And, you know, obviously there's people who have had trauma and when there are reasons for that, but you know, the bottom line is that if you don't communicate directly, then no one is going to know what you want. And you set the person that's in relationship with you up to fail. And we did talk about that a little bit last week, right? So in order to stop setting people that love us up to fail, we must communicate directly with them. Jay puts it this way. Indirect communication is when a person chooses to act out what they really mean instead of saying it directly. They can use voice, tone of voice, gestures, or facial expressions. And they do this to avoid being directly rejected, to avoid arguments, to be in a safe zone, and to ultimately save face. This cycle has to end as it can and will end a relationship. So Jay had written that for a blog post for the website, and he's completely correct when we communicate indirectly we 
open ourselves up to all kinds of problems. First of all, if you're not saying what you mean and meaning what you say, then you are setting the person who loves you up to fail because you're expecting them to read your mind. And not only that, but then you start to take on this perception that that's how other people communicate, right? That other people are playing some sort of game with you, like in that clip. Like, what kind of game is that? That Daryl just said what was on his mind, right? Like, that's just weird. <laughs> people don't do that. You know, but communicating directly is actually the fastest way to get your needs met, to just say what's on your mind. You now, I understand that that's a scary thing to do, but it's really important because if you don't, then you're expecting the person who's in relationship with you to read your mind and you set them up to fail because it is impossible. I'm sure that we can all agree that it is impossible to mind read. If you can do that, I mean, that's amazing, but I don't believe it. I think that we hope that people will pay attention to us so closely that they'll be able to anticipate our needs without us ever being able to say that. But no one can do that long term. When you first start dating someone, if you think like, oh man, this person really gets me. They know exactly what I'm thinking. They seem to really understand what I need. Well, of course they do because they're hyper-focused on you and beginning a relationship with you. But over time, that becomes exhausting. So if you know they're working all day or hanging out with their kids or whatever it is that they're doing and they forget to remember, like, or they forget what it is that you want or what they were doing before for you when they were dating, I mean, there's going to be a breakdown there because you're going to get upset and think that they don't love you in the same way if they don't meet the expectation of you know paying attention to your every need when you could just reach out and be like hey can you do this for me or can you do that for me i mean i've had i can tell stories for days about this you know i think about you know i had a client one time who had fallen asleep they were younger and they had fallen asleep during dinner time because they didn't feel well. So their family let them sleep. And they went, like they woke up and they went downstairs, downstairs and to find that everyone had already eaten dinner. So this individual went back up in their room and spent the rest of the night really upset and crying and suicidal because nobody woke her up to give her dinner. So, you know, I'm texting back and forth and I'm saying, why wouldn't you just go downstairs and get some food? Like, why don't you just get up and say, you know, get some food? You know, and the client's perspective was that the, the people that love her, they were supposed to just know that she was hungry. They were supposed to be waiting for her to wake up, have her food ready to go, and then serve it to her. But it had been hours prior that they had ate eaten excuse me <laughs> and you know so her and i are having this conversation back and forth trying to you know get on the same page of like just because that your family is not reading your mind to know that one you're feeling better two you're awake and three you're hungry doesn't mean that they don't love you but i couldn't get her to see it because she was younger she was around i don't know somewhere in the 15 to 18 age range so I ended up texting the mom and I said, you know, so-and-so's hungry. I need you to go and bring her food. Neither one of them knew that that was happening, but I was doing that because I wanted to show the child that the mom did care and did want to come close to her. And sometimes in our dysregulation, we can't see that. So in this particular situation, the mom goes, heats up the favorite food for the kid, brings the food up to the kid and the kid was completely fine after that she was like yeah oh yeah you know like I, you know i i just don't think that they love me i just didn't think that they saw me or i just didn't think that they cared about me and so it took me time to get her to understand that she has to be the one to go and ask for the thing that she want wanted you know so that's in a younger child so if you're a parent of a of an individual with bpd you know, that's something to really think about to reconnect with your child is to figure out, you know, what are you missing? What are they hoping that you'll do to read their mind? But if you're an adult, 
and you're sitting at home because your you know boyfriend or girlfriend or partner or mother sister whatever didn't call you at the time that they were supposed to call you or didn't invite you to do something that they didn't even know you wanted to do and you're stewing and you're freaking out and you know you think that no one loves you or cares about you you might want to consider picking up the phone and communicating asking a question it's not an easy thing to do i understand but it's way easier to get your needs met when you're just direct let's say a bunch of your friends are going to a party but no one actually directly asks you to go so you know you really don't inquire too much about it and the night comes for the party well you're sitting alone in your dorm room because everybody went to a party and you're not at the party and then you then you say well no one cares about me no one loves me but you never even asked if you could go so you know those are examples of mind reading i'm sure that there are a ton more that we can come up with and sometimes you know in my first example sometimes you just need your mom to bring your comfort food up to your room and reconnect with you and you need somebody to help you connect with that person and if that's the case get a mindset coach get a therapist if you can find a good one and have that person help you reattach and reconnect to the person that you love but other times it's just you and you can take the step to be brave right go back to moral compass work what's bravery bravery is doing something that's scary anyway being afraid of something and doing it anyway so yeah it's scary if you've been passive aggressive and you've been um mean and you've been indirect and you've expected people to read your mind yeah it's absolutely going to be difficult for you to pick up a phone or to look someone in the eye and to be honest and communicate directly but you know that's why you have to have a moral compass because if you really want to be somebody who's brave and courageous then you need to do it anyway because that people can get on board with that people can understand you when you're communicating directly but indirect communication it just sets people up to fail because then you create these stories in your head where you think nobody loves you and really they do they just have no idea what you want and no they should not just know what you want i don't know how many times i hear that that is not true i used to think that too but no people cannot read our minds ever i don't care if you've been dating for 10 years you've been married for 50 you never expect the person that you are in relationship with to just know what you need or want because we have bpd so when the wind blows we might need or want something completely different than what we needed or wanted to begin with so please don't make the people that love you fail by forcing them to try to read your mind as proof that they love you the next thing i want to talk about this week in terms of communication is not making assumptions so it is really important for you to consider how making negative assumptions shapes the way that you interact with the people around you I feel like everyone, including myself, as I was going through my recovery process, um, all the people that I work with now, they assume negative intent. In other words, if they are in relationship with someone and the person doesn't call them back right away or they don't text them in the morning or they like someone else's photo on Facebook or they i don't know act they're maybe they're more depressed one day so they're looking at the ground and they don't make as much eye contact well you know people with bpd love to assume negative intentions assuming that the people around them have are out to get them and then with those negative in, uh, intentions comes conclusions that they draw from that you know, so the second thing i would say if you want to improve your relationships and you want to communicate more direct directly with the people around you is stop assuming that everyone has negative intentions why would you do that anyway 
I was talking a little bit about this with Jay before I recorded this podcast over the weekend. And I think it's that whole glass half full, glass half empty mentality, right? I can say, oh, you know, I have a glass half full mentality. I'm an optimist. So I always want to believe the best and I will always want to think the best out there. Or I can be, you know, a glass half full. I can tell you when I was in the throes of the disorder, I was a glass half glass half full kind of person for sure i mean even the idea of being a glass <laughs> an optimistic person was like something that was adversive to me because i had to fit the role of bpd and you know that's not that's not our mo we're not optimists right most of us let's say so this whole not assuming people have negative intentions is the same thing if you walk around and you assume that everyone you come in contact with wants the worst for you and they're just out to get you and they're gonna hurt you, well, that's gonna shape your behavior. And it's gonna shape the way you communicate with them. And it's all it's gonna do is confirm that no one loves you. Of course they don't if everyone around you just has, you're just assuming that everyone around you has negative intentions and they wanna hurt you, right? How could they? When I switched my mentality from an optimistic to a pessimistic point, from a pessimistic to an optimistic point of view, when I switched those around, I started to assume that people have good intentions. I mean, don't people deserve a fair shake until they actually do mess up? Like look at lying in a relationship, for example. Jay used to say this to me and it was something I had never thought about before, but he would say, I never really thought about anyone cheating on me until it actually happened because I preferred to just jump two feet in, assume that the person I was with had good intentions, and then I'd rather be blindsided than just sitting around waiting for the person to lie to me. And I would think you'd rather be blindsided. What? But there's freedom in assuming that people have positive and good intentions for you because he was able to live in the moment and enjoy the relationships that he had with people for the most part because he wasn't always sitting around assuming that they would cheat on him. And he was cheated on, you know, but at least he was able, in the way that he puts it, at least he was able to see who that person really was without creating his own narratives and storylines about who they are, who they were based on his own negative assumptions. You know, so think about that. What would it like be like for you to just stop assuming that people are out to get you? How many times is that true anyway? Isn't it typically true that you're out to get you? Like if you think about all the things that, you know, I know there's probably a person that you have in mind right now if you're listening. Think about all the things they've done for you that are good. Think about them. What if you just assumed that they did the best with what they had and that they just try to be the best person that they could be? Would that change the way that you perceive their next, the next thing that they did in relation to you? I bet it would. Absolutely. It changes things for me in a big way. Everywhere I go, I used to have to practice this. If I went to CVS, I would practice smiling and just putting positive energy out and making sure that I had good intentions for the people I interacted with just in while I was shopping. You know, if someone's barreling down the aisle because they're busy and they need to get somewhere, you know, I have good intentions. So I smile and I move out of the way. Whereas maybe before I would have flipped them the bird or done something inappropriate and gotten pissed. It feels good to assume that people have good intentions and again moral compass work you'll hear me go back to that a lot do you have good intentions if you assume that everyone around you has negative intentions then you must have negative intentions too and if you have negative intentions as well why are you expecting other people to be somehow different than you So if you want people to love you and you want people to stop rejecting you and if you don't want to feel so alone, try having good intentions. See what that does and how that changes you and changes your heart and it changes the people around you. Not everybody out there is out to get us. It's not true. If you keep believing that pessimism is the way you should be because you're just waiting for that other shoe to drop and that's it and that's BPD. BPD is pessimism. I mean, my life sucks. I have BPD. Well, it's never going to get better. 
Not ever. Because that's become your identity. So maybe you should try to be a glass half full person. Not everybody's out to get you again. And the more you believe that people are out to get you, the more that you go, you'll go into this attack mode. And the more you attack, the more you push people away. It's, it's a vicious cycle. So making negative assumptions and jumping to conclusions about people's behavior, not good. Just one last example on this one. I mean, one that I get a lot is with people that are dating and they will jump to the conclusion that the person that they're dating is cheating on them. And there are so many flaws in that logic. Like it, it could be like little things like the person didn't call them back within a four hour window. There are so many other possibilities <laughs> to why the person didn't call, you know, these people back, or call my clients back. They could be sick. They could have gotten a car accident. They could have, I don't know, their phone could have died. They could have been talking to a friend. Like they could have been listening to a podcast. They could be cleaning. They could be at the gym. They could be working out. They could be hanging out with their kid. I mean, how many possibilities are there? So jumping right to, oh, well, you know what? They haven't called me in four hours. They must hate me. They definitely cheated on me. I don't know. What if, and I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who have had the moment where they've assumed that the person that they're with had negative intentions when all the while that person was actually planning something special for them. I'm sure that you're out there. So what if during the time that that person isn't messaging you back or texting you back or calling you back, they're doing something nice for you? They're building you a chicken coop. That's one that I heard. They're, maybe they are planning a special trip weekend getaway for you. So they're being a little more secretive about it. Maybe they're trying to buy you a ring and they don't want to see what's on your phone. But you don't think any of those things, do you? No. Nope. You think the absolute worst. So if you think the absolute worst, you won't be able to live in a world where people love you the way that you want them to love you. A fool finds no pleasure in understanding, but delights in airing his own opinions. That's a proverb that I thought would be really appropriate to wrap up with in this communication episode. So remember, analyze your communication style. Are you direct and to the point, or do you use indirect communication, passive aggressive aggression, mind reading, jumping to conclusions, and assuming negative intentions to express yourself? Communication breaks down when what we hear are our own assumptions and insecurities projected onto the words of someone else. Direct communication and active listening will repair these breakdowns in communication. Listen to the people you are in relationship with by taking out any negative assumptions that you may have when they are talking so that you can develop empathy. Remember, that's the ability to see the world from their point of view, to see that they have their own thoughts, feelings, and perceptions, right? So take out any assumptions that you may have so that you can see the world from their perspective. Jay and I talk a lot about communication in our work because it is a key component to having a healthy, connected relationship. So it is very important to change from that indirective, passive, indirect, passive aggressive style of communication to a direct style, style of communication. Remember that Kelly Kapoor clip from earlier? Saying exactly what you think and feel makes listening and giving feedback much easier. Be honest, be transparent. Open up the lines of communication, although scary, to a sharing of ideas, thoughts, and feelings. If you use indirect communication, you're not going to be able to get your needs met. Remember this, listening communicates love, compassion, and empathy to your partner. Listening also helps you understand each other, connect, and communicate effectively. Are you tired of feeling frustrated, resentful, or disconnected from your family, friends, and partner? Thrive, 
Mind Body LLC Mindset Coaching and Counseling can help you. Visit us on the web at thriveonlinecounseling.com. Again, that's thriveonlinecounseling.com. And receive 10% off your first session pack with coupon code THRIVE10. See you then. Awesome Q&A time. This question comes from Lauren from the Facebook group From Borderline to Beautiful. Lauren says, please cover how you deal with the constant emptiness and feeling disconnected from everyone all the time, please. So that's a great topic, and I really wanted to incorporate that in today's episode and last week's episode because I think as we saw that there are times where we drive a wedge between us and the person that we love or the people that love us because we don't speak and communicate directly with them and we don't allow ourselves the space and time to become vulnerable enough with people so that they can connect and communicate and have compassion and love for us. So if you want to deal with the constant emptiness and feeling disconnected from people, try some of the strategies that I talked about in today's episode. Communicate directly with the people around you. Ask for what you want and need. Be brave because it's a scary thing to do at first. Do it a little bit at a time. Ask for cheese on your burger to start. It sounds silly, but I know there are those of you out there who don't have experience just asking for what you want. Maybe because when you were a kid, you were shamed for it. Or maybe because at some point in time you were taught or you learned that if you communicate directly that you're going to be rejected. You know, but times are a change in. So in order to feel connected with someone, you have to make the effort to connect back with them and to be vulnerable. And one way to do that is to be honest, transparent, show up for people, listen to understand, and remember that your insecurities aren't someone else's thoughts. I'll say that again. Your insecurities are all your own. They aren't someone else's thoughts. So if you feel disconnected, it may be very well because you take the thoughts that you have and the things that you hate about yourself and feel about yourself and you give them to other people as if they created them. That will disconnect you very quickly from those around you. Communicate directly, listen to understand, and come back next week for more tips and tricks on how to maintain recovery through BPD. If you want to contact me, you can call at 1-844-984-7483. That's 844-9-THRIVE. Or send me an email at rose at thriveonlinecounseling.com. To everyone out there listening and sending me messages, I really appreciate it. I have a lot of people say that they would think maybe that I'm too busy to respond to them, but that's the point of this. Please send me messages, send me emails. I will respond where I can, when I can. That is my entire goal is to help people. So if you're out there and you need help, reach out. I would love to hear from you. Okay, thanks for listening. That was from Borderline and Beautiful, a production of Thrive Mind Body LLC, online coaching that helps frustrated individuals, resentful couples, and disconnected families navigate through tough times. Visit us on the web at thriveonlinecounseling.com. If you like this show, remember, you can hear it on Anchor or Apple Podcasts or Pocket Casts or any app that you use to listen to podcasts. Subscribe to get a new episode every Monday. If you want to get in touch, you can leave me a voice message. Some of you had some comments and questions from the last episodes, and I'd love to hear whatever questions you have too. Just download the Anchor mobile app, search for From Borderline to Beautiful, and tap the message button to send me a voice message. We'll have all those links in the show description. Okay, we made it. Thanks again for listening. I'm Rose Skeeters, and I'll be back next week with another episode of From Borderline to Beautiful. Talk to you then.